Uh, we're at the Dodworth Miners Welfare, um, and uh, I'm with Dave and with John, um, and we are just about to. Well, there's going to be a big event today to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the miners' strike. Um, and and Dave and, and John, I mean, have you been coming to these events every year? Oh, yeah. Every year that you yeah, celebrate? Yeah, try and get to as yeah. many as I can, yeah. Yeah, whenever one's been out, we'll yeah. yeah, as many as we can get. And um, what, what's your, um, what, what's, how do you feel 40 years on? I mean, it, it seems like a long time ago. Does it feel like a long time ago? Or does it feel like it's for, for not me, that long? it feels ago? like yesterday, I mean... Although it's 40 years and, and it appears a long time, uh, in my head it just seems like yesterday. I mean, as soon as I walk into a club like that and see full of like-minded people like myself, it just, this is like the spiritual love. Not just Doddard, but anywhere where there's a group of men like this today. What, you know what I mean? Yeah, for me it, it's still happening because the mess this country's in now is a beca because of our betrayal and our defeat. 40 years ago and because we're still here I think that's testimony to how we're still fighting on we're still yeah. celebrating still we're, we're not we're not down about what happened still you know fighting yeah, on yeah. justice we, we stood up we fought and we're still fighting yeah I mean that the, the word celebration seems like I'm thinking well like you didn't win the strike Thatcher won she had all no, the no, we, all the forces against you oh, but we, we won because uh, Mr Lee and she's not yeah <laughs> and that's that's important yeah. when she said yeah. you know that we'd seen off the enemy within everything was supposed to die trade union yeah. movement was supposed yeah. to vanish the fact that we're still here, the fact that there's things like this yeah, happening all yeah. over former mining areas is a testimony to the struggle. We're proud of what we did. We stood up for a whole year against everything. The state, the police, the judiciary, the government, and we came so damn close to winning. If only that bastard Kinnock and Norman Willis had really got behind us, we would have won. Yeah, I mean, and, and that that sort of betrayal is part of the story. Uh, when I, you know, when we look back on that, it's about people, the solidarity that you had with all the people clubbing together, yeah. make, making it work. And then there's also the betrayal. I mean, is that something like you've just said of Kenneth? I mean, is it something that you just can't? Well, it, Forgive. It, it could have all been so different, like John saying, we're a bit more back in from TUC, I'm from Kinnock. It could have, the result could be much different. I mean, I mean, do you see that with every struggle that we've got, is that there's always people who betray? Do you think that's part of humanity? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that's, we, let, we let ourselves down as a movement, I think, not us personally, but the working class. I don't think it's part of humanity I think you've got certain leaders who because of the privileges yeah. they enjoy because of the salaries lose touch and they think it's about being respectable and cozying up with the enemy and, try, and trying to that if we're nice to them that we're, they'll be nice back to us it's never happened yeah. you know they're the ruling class and they're not the ruling class for nothing they're good at it they yeah. practiced it for centuries and they've still got their feet on our throats I mean, and the other thing looking at back on it was the media's um power um in, it's in still saying with media power in it that's well, it sounds do you think that was like the first example of, of that where we saw the media in for me at my age as a younger man not the first time i noticed our, our media up there because if play to that I was busy working and fetching my family i mean you didn't take too much notice of it uh, but at that time when you seen uh, even police had loads of respect for police up to then why wouldn't i have i've no respect at all now why would I have? You know what I mean? And uh, it was a big learning curve that year for everybody. And I mean everybody. And uh, some people have learned, some people haven't. You know what I mean? Some people have been proud of what they did, and some others have been proud of what they did. So if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think the media, we really saw whose interests ah, it yeah. served, you know. Our great leader, Arthur Scargill, was the most slandered 
and uh, vilified man this country's ever seen. And he stood tall because he'd got us around him and, and with him. And I think now, these days, the media have perfected it even more. You know, we're seeing people who just want peace, who want to stop That's slaughter, right. being called hate marchers. Mm, it, th them sort of descriptions started with us as the enemy within, and now it's hate marchers. That's how far this country has descended into totalitarianism, I think. There's quite a lot of um, uh, similarities between, if you look at how the miners' strike and all grieve as well has, was treated by the media, where they kind of change the footage around and stuff like that. And if you look at how they do Gaza, I mean, they try to try to show evidence that 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 Hamas is kind of the problem, not Israel. Yeah. You know, it's the yeah. it's the same tactic, isn't it? And the same organisations are doing it. You know, the BBC are supporting. Israel. Well, you know, the BBC support the government of the National Coal Board. You know, it's the same media peddling the same lies and, and, and false narratives. And, and also, the, um, the two main political parties haven't done anything to, to show what's going on. And in, in the miners' strike, you know, in all three, but I guess Neil Kinnock wasn't saying this was a terrible crime that's happened. Has he ever said anything about that? I'm not aware that he said anything. I think, you know, because footage was reversed and because um, a lot of the right media were talking about violence um, and uh, not being biased as opposed to not telling the facts, trying to demonise the miners and make out the miners were being violent. You know? and, and we know that miners were on peaceful demonstrations most of the time, but when they were being attacked, they were trying to defend themselves, you know, and that's what happened at Oakley, you know, and we've seen a lot of the footage now, but we didn't see the footage then, they managed to, to add a false narrative to all that footage. I mean, I just, we've heard that ITV are, are here, I mean, is, is the media starting to be reassess their, their, their way they portray the minor strike as a whole and also all griefs. Do you see changes in, in the media's uh, um, outlook on it? Not really, no. No? I think they've shown a few good pieces of footage lately, some interesting uh, commentary to it. But in general, no, I think they're still peddling the same old lies. Yeah, because they talk about bias and fact. Um, this, they, there's a Channel 4 series recently come out where they focus on Shirebrook for the first episode, which, which showed a total distortion of what happened during the miners' strike. It set a scene for almost implying that the miners' strike was six of one and half a dozen of the other, you know, but, and almost implied that 50% uh, of miners actually didn't want to be on strike, and 50% of, you know, they, they, they keep perpetuating the, these myths and false narratives in the name of, uh, oh, we don't want media bias. And we say, we're not being biased, we want you to tell the facts. Tell the facts about what happened, what, what led up to that strike. Tell the facts about the Ridley plan, tell the facts about how Thatcher wanted to, and that government wanted to destroy the steel industry so there wasn't the demand for coal. And tell the facts about how they tried to engineer everything to do with the strike. Tell the facts about their lies about pit closures. They said there were going to be only 20 pit closures. Only 20. You know, the NUM and Arthur were telling the facts at the time. They knew what was going on, but the media kept lying. The, the um, Mike Thatcher who drafted a letter for Ian McGregor to send out to all the miners lied in the letter to try and get them back to work. We know a lot of that now. We guessed it then and we kind of knew it now. But you know, they're not dealing in facts at all. They're not dealing in facts about Israel and they're not dealing in facts about the minds. And uh, this is what we're constantly getting. And the peak kind of people who were in charge of uh, the BBC and in charge of the media are the same people who are in charge now. So they might give us little nuggets from time to time. But as far as we're concerned, it's the same old media and it's the same old lies. There's some, some good people work for these organisations. 
and try within the organisation, but they never get very far. We don't really hear about the, the consequences of the of the strike and the losing the strike and what happened when the, 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 the pits were closed. I mean, Nobby, you, you've got a, a story about yeah. this. Uh, there's, there's a, a lad who, who worked for at Warsaw Main Pit, which is a Nottinghamshire, a Nottinghamshire pit. And uh, anyway, after the after the strike, this, this lad, he came from London. He had no background whatsoever in London. His name was, he, his, in mine, his name was Mark Hunter. And he were, he were a punk, he had something he can hear, like, yeah? And uh, they were already come along, and he immediately sort of like uh, became absorbed into trade union. They were already after the, after, yeah, after the strike, uh, Mark organised a, a strike, a walkout, because of McGregor, who were the lead, it was a chair of the National Coal Board, uh, to, re to visit the pit. Anyway, the, the strike was successful, and even the scabs came out. But anyway, they sacked Mark, they sacked Mark, and there was another lad uh, called Tony Geddes. They sacked him. Now, Mark had four kids. He had four kids, and he was aged about 27. Anyway, tragically, Mark took his own life. Mark took his own life. What about? And this, about, maybe about two or three months after this. And to me, it's one of the most tragic things that happened in this, right? It, I still get, I get more angry about that. Then I do, and I, I, I've got things to be incredibly angry about. But that makes me so angry that Mark took his own life because of Thatcher and because of what the Corbyn was doing, and just because he was fighting for his class. It was absolutely disgusting. For them. They left a widow and four young kids. I still get emotional when I think about it. Anyway, Mark Hunter.